to Congress to serve the people. This week has once again revealed that extreme MAGA Republicans have zero interest in doing anything productive that is designed to benefit the American people. House Republicans are the party of insurrection, impeachment, and illegitimate investigations. Nothing more, nothing less. Insurrection, impeachment, and illegitimate investigations. These extremists have made clear once again this week that they have no ideas, no agenda, no vision, and have made no progress on solving problems for everyday Americans. It's sad and it's shameful that extreme MAGA Republicans have turned the House of Representatives into a spectacle and a national embarrassment. The most unproductive Congress in modern American history being presided over by these MAGA Republicans whose agenda, let me correct myself, is chaos, dysfunction, and extremism. That's their agenda. That's their substantive agenda. Anchored around insurrection, impeachment, and illegitimate investigation. Question. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Leader. I wanted to ask you with respect to government funding. Obviously, we saw Leader Schumer um, start to move the process forward in terms of a potential CR. Is that something you support? If so, how long do you think it should be? And will Democrats provide the votes for one? Well, there are ongoing uh, discussions about where we are at in the appropriations process uh, and whether uh, we have the ability to complete the work under the time frame that is in front of us, which right now uh, involves deadlines on both January 19th and February 2nd. I think uh, that we have to continue to press forward to get as much done, but there are some practical realities that many of the appropriators on both sides of the aisle have indicated could constrain them from completing their work as it relates to doing what needs to be done in the most robust way for the American people. So from my perspective, let's cross that bridge when we get to it. But it's a question that I think is going to be before us as to the need for continuing resolution sooner rather than later. Uh, thank you. Uh, Michelle Obama said that she's terrified uh, about possible outcome of 2024. Uh, election. In terms of your priorities, leadership priorities for 2024, what's your response to those who may share the same concern about possible return of Donald Trump to the White House? Well, the American people should be terrified by the prospect that the leading candidate for the Republican Party is the twice impeached former President of the United States who's under multiple indictments and is threatening to turn America's democracy into a dictatorship, solely to serve his own personal interests, not the interests of the American people. That is a prospect that should terrify everyone. Donald Trump has made clear that he wants to take away a woman's freedom to make her own reproductive health care decisions. Donald Trump is celebrating the fact that the Supreme Court, <clears throat> at his direction, apparently, struck down Roe v. Wade and is criminalizing abortion care, which they've unleashed all across America. The American people should be terrified at the prospect that the extreme MAGA Republicans want to detonate Social Security 
and end Medicare as we know it. The extreme MAGA Republicans, under the leadership of Donald Trump, want to end the Affordable Care Act, which will result in more than 100 million Americans with pre-existing medical conditions losing their health care. That's one of the top agenda items for Republicans if they were to get complete control of government. So yes, the American people should be terrified. Everything that we care about is on the ballot this November. Reproductive freedom is on the ballot. Social Security is on the ballot. Medicare is on the ballot. The Affordable Care Act is on the ballot. Gun safety is on the ballot, and democracy itself is on the ballot. Have you spoken to uh, Speaker Johnson about the possibility of a continuing resolution, and also what are your thoughts on the deal that he made with Schumer on the top line spending numbers over the weekend? I have not spoken to uh, Speaker Johnson this week about the possibility of a continuing resolution, uh, but in the context of the top line spending agreement, <coughs> It is consistent with what House Democrats have said from the very beginning, which is we had an agreed upon top line number connected to the Bipartisan Fiscal Responsibility Act of 1659. And nothing short of that was acceptable because that top line spending number is what is necessary for Congress to meet the needs of the American people in terms of their health, their safety, and their economic security. Are you concerned about them using po uh, certain policy writers that may lose some Democrat support? House that? Democrats have made clear in partnership with Senate Democrats and President Biden himself that we will not accept extreme right-wing policy changes as the ransom note in order to avoid a government shutdown. Many of your members have expressed frustration at the process over the immigration negotiations in the Senate, not being in the room, not having insight as to what is being discussed. That being said, a majority of them are going to have to carry this if it is successful in the Senate and goes to the House. What is your view on this? Well, we have to take a look uh, at what emerges from the Senate negotiations, individual members. Uh, are being read into some of the discussions. Um, but from my standpoint, nothing is agreed upon until everything is agreed upon. And any agreement related to the border should be reflective of two principles. One, that America is a nation of immigrants, and that will continue to give us our economic competitive advantage so that our country can continue to win the future. And any agreement, of course, should also uplift the principle that America is a nation anchored in the rule of law. And we need uh, to create a better situation on our southern border. Does the race in, uh, in Long Island for the former Santos seat how important is that in terms of demonstrating the political wins as to whether or not President Biden's unpopularity is dampening things for your side or the sort of Dobbs, post-Dobbs energy is still going? Well, the race in the 3rd Congressional District in Long Island uh, will center on local issues and which candidate, in my view, is best positioned uh, to deliver for the people of Queens and Nassau and County. Tom Swazi has a track record of bipartisan problem solving on issues of importance and will be, in my view, an important voice in resolving challenges for the American people, including repealing the state and local tax cap that extreme MAGA Republicans imposed on the people of New York and the United States of America as part of the GOP tax scam. With respect to the question 
um, any broader implications for President Biden? That's a settled question. That has already been resolved. In November of 2022, all of the predictions were that Democrats were going to be wiped out because of Joe Biden's alleged unpopularity. That we were going to lose 40, 50, 60 seats in the House, lose the Senate, get wiped out in terms of the governorships in Wisconsin, in Pennsylvania, in Michigan. That we were going to lose state legislative seats. And that Republicans were going to pick up critically important positions in races for Secretary of State and Attorney General. And we were told that this red wave was coming because of concerns related to the economy and President Biden's unpopularity. The exact opposite happened. Democrats defied political gravity. We didn't lose 40, 50, or 60 seats. We're only five seats short. And had it not been for some redistricting challenges where Republicans rigged the game, Democrats might even be in the majority right now in the House. We didn't lose the Senate, we gained the seat. We didn't lose governorships. We won in Michigan, we won in Pennsylvania, we won in Wisconsin, we gained the governorship in Arizona. We held on to Kansas. We flipped red seats in terms of governorships in Maryland and in Massachusetts. We won legislative bodies, including the entire legislature in Michigan and one half of the Pennsylvania legislature amongst others, held our supermajorities in New York and California. And every single Republican election denier who was on the ballot running for Attorney General or Secretary of State in November of 2022 in a competitive race lost. And then we were told, well, that was all about the energy connected to the immediate aftermath of Roe v. Wade falling. But then we won a highly competitive close race in Wisconsin in April of last year in terms of the Wisconsin Supreme Court. And then we were told, no, that was just a one-off special election. Uh, Democrats are going to get wiped out in the off-year 2023 November elections. And what happened? The exact opposite. Reproductive freedom prevailed in the increasingly red state of Ohio. Republicans got wiped out in Virginia. We took control of the Virginia General Assembly. The Democratic governor of Kentucky held on, not with a Republican in the White House, with Joe Biden in the White House. And so all available evidence, not the punditry, all available evidence suggests to me that Joe Biden hasn't been an anchor on Democratic prospects. We keep winning. And Tom Swazi is working hard to do the same on February 13th. Do you approve of or embrace the emerging tax deal? The child tax credit must be robustly funded as part of any tax agreement that receives significant support from House Democrats. The Biden child tax credit that was enacted as part of the American Rescue Plan was incredibly important in improving the lives of working families, middle class families, and low income families. Reducing child poverty in many communities in half during the last six months of 2021. The child tax credit doesn't benefit blue states. It benefits all states. And I think it's important as part of any tax agreement that is reached 
that will need bipartisan support in the House of Representatives that the child tax credit is fully funded in a manner consistent with what was done in the American Rescue Plan. From my standpoint, that should be the starting point of any discussion. If I can go back to sort of the discussion you were just having about about Tom Swasey and the, what's currently happening in the House. They currently have two vote margins, the Republicans do. Um, if, with the departure of Bill Johnson, it's, it's going to stay the same, but if Swasey wins and comes back and Higgins remains, they'll go down to a one vote margin. Have you had any conversations with Brian Higgins about staying longer to sort of tighten up those uh, margin of error for your for the Republicans? Yeah, I have not had that conversation uh, with Congressman Higgins. Um, it's also not my understanding that he's put a precise definitive date right. on his departure. And it's a reasonable conversation, at least in the short term, for Democrats and Republicans to figure out um, how we can govern in an enlightened way that will benefit the American people that we serve. And what is clear is that the only way to get things done for the American people in the House of Representatives is through a bipartisan governing coalition. That's the only way forward. At this point, House Republicans can't organize a two-car funeral. They can't do it. They can't even pass their own rule. And so it's not clear to me how anything gets done unless traditional Republicans come to the conclusion that they have to break from the MAGA extremists and join Democrats in governing in an enlightened, bipartisan way to solve problems for hardworking American taxpayers. Go back to this one. What was your reaction to Hunter Biden's decision to show up yesterday at the contempt hearing? Well, the House Republicans were exposed on the oversight committee, in my view, as complete and total frauds with respect to the efforts to target President Biden's family. <coughs> The chair of the Oversight Committee has repeatedly and publicly said that Hunter Biden shows up and is willing to participate in a public hearing that they look forward to that situation being presented to the American people. And then Hunter Biden shows up and they continue the charade of trying to hold the president's son in contempt. The, the Republicans are engaged in political gamesmanship and stunts because they have no vision, have no ideas, have no agenda, and certainly have no accomplishments to present to the American people. You mentioned the Republicans are struggling to pass these rules. Um, if a spending bill comes to the floor, when a spending bill comes to the floor, whatever form that takes, would Democrats help pass the rule like you did with the debt ceiling last year if, if Republicans were struggling to do so themselves? I'll we'll have to take a look at the four corners of any uh, eventual spending legislation that is presented to us and then make decisions about the best way to get it over the finish line at that point. Thank you, Mr. Leader. I have two questions. The first, what message can you give to the American people pertaining to what uh, House Democrats are doing uh, to ensure that a government shutdown does not happen? Well, we were able to reach a top-line spending agreement in a bipartisan way that has unlocked the appropriations process that from the standpoint of House Democrats is now in the hands of Rosa DeLauro and the appropriations team and we have full confidence uh, in their ability to do what is necessary uh, to craft spending bills that meet the needs of the American people. We are also confident that Senate Democrats under the leadership of Chuck Schumer and Senate Republicans 
are willing to work in a bipartisan way to reach uh, an ultimate spending agreement with respect to the 12 bills that need to be passed into law. The open question remains whether traditional Republicans are willing to break from the MAGA extremists who are clearly determined to shut down the government. And if any government shutdown occurs, it will be a sole result of Republicans once again deciding that if they are unable to jam their extreme right-wing policies down the throats of the American people, they're going to shut down the government, hurt everyday Americans, and crash the economy. We're going to do everything possible to stop that from happening. Okay, my second question. Uh, what do you make of some GOP members that are floating this idea to House, House Speaker uh, Mike Johnson over the spending bill? The House Republican agenda is chaos, dysfunction, and extremism. Thank you. D just to circle back on New York 3, not to beat a dead horse here, but obviously you're stressing the evidence provided by past elections. I'm curious if you think, given the circumstances, that led us to the New York 3 special election and the extraordinary George Santos story. If there's any evidence that will provide actually about 2024 in November, and then separately, uh, curious what your response is to Elise Stefanik echoing the, the use of the word hostages to describe January Sixers. Well, Elise Stefanik should be ashamed of herself. That no decent, rational, credible individual particularly folks who were here on January 6th when the violent insurrection took place or are closely connected to the institution of Congress should claim that the violent insurrectionists who attacked and brutally beat police officers are hostages. Extreme MAGA Republicans have become captive of Donald Trump's radical ideology and are parroting his words, his thoughts, and his ideas. The real question is why haven't House Republicans in New York, like Mike Lawler, or others denounced Elise Stefani. And why do they continue to rely on her fundraising support in order to try to fool the voters in New York and pretend like they believe in moderation? Yeah, um, are there chances of planning another short-term CR? And if so, for how long? Well, that's an open question. Uh, that remains up for discussion. We'll go back to the side. Right now, uh, outside of Speaker Johnson. Try to show both sides of the aisle love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, outside of Speaker Johnson's office, there's reporters talking to HFC members going in and out, saying that they're discussing an alternative plan to this top line number that was negotiated between Senator Schumer and Speaker Johnson. I mean, what do you make of the fact that this seems like Groundhog Day, that, you know, Speaker Johnson seems beholden to this far right side of his party? We have publicly and clearly and unequivocally reached an agreement on the top line spending number, and that is 1659. There is nothing more to discuss to the extent that House Republicans back away from an agreement that was just announced a few days ago. It will make clear that House Republicans are determined to shut down the government crash the economy, and hurt the American people. Uh, and outside of the Beltway question, uh, New York City school um, closed for remote learning recently, sheltered hundreds of families and migrants. Um, do you have any reaction to that? Yeah, I haven't been fully briefed on the situation at Madison High School, but uh, I look forward to receiving a greater level of information as to why the decision was made. Uh, and most importantly, ensuring that we can continue to provide the access to the educational opportunity 
to all New York City students without disruption moving forward. In light of Congressman DeLuzio's call yesterday for the Defense Secretary to step down, have you talked with Congressman DeLuzio since then? And do you agree with his uh, sentiment that the Defense Secretary should resign? From my standpoint, we need far more information uh, before uh, I can make any detailed comment on the appropriate way forward. But I do not believe that Secretary Austin should resign. My thoughts and prayers are with Secretary Austin. He's a great patriot, a good man. He served this country for decades. And I'm hopeful that he will have a full, complete, and speedy recovery. I do look forward to being briefed by the administration in terms of protocols that they may put in place moving forward to ensure that information flow within the administration and between the administration and Congress is more expeditious uh, and also to make sure that there are plans in place in terms of the chain of command uh, when a cabinet secretary uh, is temporarily unable uh, to perform their roles in leading the department. Last question. Another question on the uh, emerging tax package. Senator Ron Wyden said that it's important to get this done before January 29th tax season. Obviously, a lot of uh, tax benefits in this package would be going to help businesses, and they want to do it before the next tax year. Do you share that same urgency? Does this need to be done before January 29th? It's important to move sooner rather than later. I wouldn't put a hard date on when this must be completed, but it is important that any tax package robustly support the child tax credit. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.